Thanks for joining us today at City Life. We believe today's message will empower you and point you towards Jesus. But remember that church is so much more than a message you listen to. It's a living, breathing community that we invite you to be a part of. We hope to see you on a Sunday morning at City Life, in person or online. My name is um, Bryce, and I'm on team at Home Church. I've been on team at Home Church uh, for close to 30 years, and so that means I was involved years ago with teams that would come up to the library for the early years of city life, and so I've been in the library rooms, all the different rooms, uh, the upper room that you were in, and then the other side of the building, and now today I walked in, and I went, Wow, wow, wow. Are you so thankful for what God is doing right here? I love, I love your pastors so much. Pastors Mike and Monica and the whole team. JD and Joy are absolutely amazing. Melissa, that was awesome today. Jazz is walking me around and helping me out. So uh, it's, it's just awesome to be awesome to be with you. I want to introduce you to my squad, my family. I think we got a picture of them. Uh, there they are. That is my wonderful wife, Glow. We've been married for over 15 years now, and, and uh, Bryson is eight. And I'm going to tell you a little story about Bryson in just a few moments. And Briley is six and in, in grade one. Oh, my goodness. What are we to do? What are we to do? Well, today I want to talk to you uh, in the series that we're in on heart for the house, heart for the church, man. And uh, I listened actually to Jen's message two weeks ago on how there's uni unity and diversity and Jeremy's message last week on unity and community and what community is. And today I want to speak to you on the subject of don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Come on, turn to your neighbor. If you're online, just speak it to yourself. Just say it. Don't lose heart. And so we're going to go to a really important a couple of scriptures that I want to tie together today out of Second, uh, Second Corinthians. And I want you to remember that as we're reading this, between First Corinthians and Second Corinthians, the Apostle Paul has just come out of prison as he's writing this. Hello? He's just come out of prison. And so we can find encouragement. And so you can get to your Bibles. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 3 to 7. And we're going to be moving around in a couple of different uh, scriptures together. So here we go. I'm going to read it off of the, the screen here. And uh, it's, it's going to be, is, does the scripture come up on the screen? Is it going to pop up? Let's see if it happens. Poof, there it is. And they're going to, they're going to frame me in perfectly for you online. <laughs> this is great. And you're going to see the back. Look at it. I worked on the back of my head. I'm going to just keep myself sideways for everybody online. There we go. Praise be to God. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in our all, in all of our troubles. Come on. God wants to comfort us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ if we are distressed. Oh, this is good. It's for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it's for your comfort, which produces in you patient, patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer and our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings so also you share in our comfort this word comfort is so important before we go to the next scripture because this word comfort means strength it's got an encouragement to you and so today I want you to receive a new strength, a fresh strength from the Lord today to receive that for yourself. But then you walk out into Leduc, you go out into Edmonton, you go out into Wetaskiwin this week, and you share that strength with others. The comfort and strength God wants to give you, he wants you to then take out of this place into your mission field. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 3, 
uh, verse 16 together. This is, this is awesome. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is. Everybody say it. Freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is. Freedom. There's freedom. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Now watch this. This is, this is where I want you to catch it. Keep going, guys. Let's flip it over. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, do not lose heart. Okay, one more. Can you handle one more Bible verse? We're in church. Let's read a little more Bible. Come on. Let's do it. All right, here we go. 2 Corinthians 4, 14 to 16. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people what are we going to do with the comfort of Christ today? What are we going to do with the strength of Christ today? Encourage ourselves, strengthen ourselves, and then reach more and more people with the gospel message, the good news message. More and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Come on, everybody. Therefore, we do not lose heart. <laughs> Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Lord, today we ask you that you would do something so special through the power of your Holy Spirit in this place and wherever anyone is watching today. Lord, I pray that you would comfort us, that you would strengthen us, that you would encourage us today because we, we actually, as we're comforted, are called on mission to comfort those around us. And so, Lord, you know all the trouble, you know all the trials everybody's walking through in this room today, and we ask you to move like only you can. In Jesus' name, and everybody said a great big amen. amen. I'm going to move that green dot. Awesome. Listen, I want to. I want to tell you. Can I tell you a little story about my son? Can I tell you a little story about my son Bryson? Well, he's eight years old, and, and my son. Listen, he really, really over the last year. I was hoping it was a phase, but he really, really wants a pet snake. Any snake? Yeah, gross. Immediately, gross. That's what comes out of everybody. I don't know about you online what you feel about snakes, but I'm the same way. I'm like, you know, uh, we, we find the snake in Genesis. I'm really cool with just leaving him in Genesis, and he doesn't have to be in, in our house. And so I said, Bryson, if you really want a snake, you're going to have to pray for that snake. And you're going to have, you're eight years old, you're going to have to save up for that snake. And I already did the math, and I figured out uh, with the cage and everything, it was going to cost well over $500. And I thought, nah. <laughs> Safe zone. Uh, my heart is hard towards having a snake in our house. Hello? So we were out hiking one day just a few weeks ago. We're out hiking one day. And, um, and we're hiking as a family. And my boy is sticking his head under every rock. Like every rock. I'm like, get your head out from under there. I don't know what's under there. Like a rabid gopher or a rattle. I don't know what's, what's going on under there. He's just loves snakes. I took him to a friend's place who had a python, hoping that he would be terrified and he'd never pick it up. Man, he just grabbed onto that thing. And I was like, oh, Lord Jesus. I, I, like, my heart is hard towards a snake. So I'm driving down the road to a team meet that we had as a, as a staff. And uh, I was uh, driving from Calgary to Red Deer. And I felt the Lord say to me, Bryce, I want to, listen, God can speak to you. As he speaks, he just speaks in very different ways. And he's, God is so cool. He talks to us all many different ways. But I felt like God said to me, Bryce, I want to bless you. I want to bless your family. And I want to bless the church. I was like, man, yeah, that's a good word. God wants to, like, God, you know what's going on out there, right? No, I want to bless you. I want to bless your family and I want to bless the church. Well, it was that afternoon Somebody had seen my picture of Bryson and his quest for a garter snake. And it was actually the doctors that delivered our kids. Our kids are miracle children. And uh, we, were, we, we had to pray and believe God for six years for our kids. So thankful for the miracle that we had. And so the doctor uh, checked in with us and said, hey, Bryce, we saw your post. And we're going to take a little sabbatical for a couple of months. And uh, our son has got a corn snake and would love to bless 
your boy with the snake. <laughs> I'm like, at first I was like, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and then I felt like God said, wait a second. Like, I felt like, is my hard heart going to block the blessing to my son? Like, I'm like, my hard heart towards this? He's asking, I told him to pray and save up. <laughs> and God is answering, but it's coming through me. I'm in Red Deer. The snake's in Lacombe. We live in Calgary. I don't want this thing in the back seat of my car. So I said, God, help me. Help me with my hard heart. I want to bless my boy. He's our little miracle. I want to bless him. You want to bless him. Oh. And so I said, yes, I will come out and, and pick the snake up. So I get out there, and I'm thinking, corn snake. I'm thinking this. That kid pulled out that snake, man. It's like four feet long. It was huge. And I didn't tell Bryson. And so how many of you know that four foot Demon listen, I, listen, I will tell you this, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this right now, and I know this, this listen, don't check out on me, but I, I now will take a snake over a cat. I think cats are way more demonic than snakes are. Um, but we got it home, and Bryson, you know, he named him Cornelius, and he was so excited, oh, I wish I had the picture. Is there a picture of him up there? There he is with Cornelius the corn snake. We thought we'd give him a good biblical name. Hello? A good biblical name. But I, I, I thought about that and I thought, I wonder if that's a picture of us. Sometimes God wants to bless us, but our hearts have become so hard. Like, can we receive that word today? Could you receive that word and not just go, oh, that's just some kind of language or just pomp? No, but to be able to receive in my heart today, to keep my heart soft to, wait a second, God, you want to bless me? You want to bless my family? You want to bless City Life Church? Scripture says, watch over your heart with all diligence. For from it flows a wellspring of life. Your heart is so valuable. Your heart is the source of life. And can I tell you today, your heart is consistently under attack all the time. I don't know if you noticed, but information is coming everywhere, and we've never been more polarized. But we do not have to be polarized in God's great church. The heart for the church is Jesus Christ, the good news of the gospel, the cross, and our resurrected Savior today. And that he wants to comfort us. And so the Apostle Paul is saying, you can be comforted today. Man, it's amazing to me that in between 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, he's in jail and he's encouraging us. Woo, that is so good. He's encouraging us to not just hold this secret to ourselves, but to take this comfort and strength and keep our hearts nice and soft so that God can use our hearts. And I think hearts, physically and spiritually, we have to be so careful with our hearts because our hearts can become calcified. There's, there's studies that, that show that our hearts actually can become like rock. Uh, I, I, was, I was speaking to a, a friend of mine, and they said their father lived such a hard life that his, his heart was actually calcified. Parts of his heart were, were like rock. But here's the good news today, is that Jesus comes into our lives and he replaces an old heart with a new heart. And now it's up to us as believers. Listen, if you're not a Christian yet, you can have that new heart by receiving him today. By just saying, Jesus, I'm going to follow you. I'm receiving the call that you're putting on my life. I'm going to make you Lord and I'm going to make you Savior. And scripture says that he's going to replace a hard heart with a new heart. And all of a sudden you say, God wants to bless me and my family, he wants to bless the church because, man, we are blessed and highly favored with the work of the cross and the gospel and what Jesus has done with us with the power of the Holy Spirit. And so point number one is this today. Hardship doesn't have to mean a hard heart. Hardship does not have to mean a hard heart. I mean, we got to be so careful with, with our hearts. Hello? Like trouble doesn't have it. Proverbs 28, 14, blessed is the one who always trembles before God, but whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble. 
So when we get a hard heart, we can actually go, no, I don't want to live that way. And we fall into trouble instead of a soft heart, which is so counterintuitive in so many ways. Where we just say, God, I want you to, I want you to talk to me. <laughs> I want you to speak with me. I want to have relationship with you every day. And I want to draw on that comfort and strength every day. I'm not just going to wait for Sunday for that. I'm going to receive that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Because I can access you and I can have a fresh word every day. A living word. A sharp word like a two-edged sword. Isn't that awesome? And so as we face trials, we have to realize that God doesn't want us to have a hard heart and actually in new creation in him. He's saying, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Allow God to move in these situations. The opposition that you're facing. A soft heart will look at opposition and, and go, oh man, this hurts. Ouch. Like the Apostle Paul talks to us about all the things that he went through and the trouble and the hardship later in 2 Corinthians. He lists it off what he went through. And yet, he's able with the heart to go, I want to have compassion. I want to have comfort. And I want to extend that to God's great church. And so you don't have to have a hard heart today. The Apostle James says, don't let your heart be troubled. <laughs> Hello? Like, don't, no, that's Jesus. Sorry, misquote. That was Jesus. Uh, we're going to end off in that scripture. He says, count it all joy when you face trials and troubles of various, of various kinds. So how do you know that you have a, that you've got a hard heart? How do you know? Well, I think there's a couple of things that we can start looking at when we, when we dive into when we dive into the scripture, but when we take a look at even the physical heart and we look at our, and our spiritual heart. And so just a couple of thoughts just to evaluate indicators sometimes that we're losing our pump. JD, JD said, I like to go to the gym every once in a while. I like getting around the big, I work out at Gold's Gym in Calgary and there's some big guys around me. But there's some indicators that you start losing your pump, that, that flow of life, okay? And every once in a while things happen and you can, you can lose your pump, <laughs> Loss of passion, loss of passion. What are you passionate about? What makes you laugh? What makes you cry? Are you passionate about anything? Sometimes the things that used to be meaningful sometimes can become mechanical. That we would come into church and we'd go, God, I want a fresh word from you today. I want to worship you today. I want to raise my hands and just give you all the praise, all the glory today because praise will get over top of whatever I'm going through. Loss of passion. People are no longer, indicator that you're losing your pump is people are no longer priority. And self-preservation is. Oh, what a season where we could just self-preserve instead of, God, comfort me so I can comfort others. Comfort me, the heart of the church. Comfort me so that I can comfort others. Strengthen me so that I can strengthen others. God, would you bless me so that I can bless others. Negative thoughts become primary. Remember, your strongest thought your life is moving in the direction of your your strongest thought so you got to guard negativity keep that heart pumping believing god is going to do greater things he's going to do the best keep declaring over yourself that the best really is yet to come the receptor to believe is broken when our physical hearts become hard it loses the ability to catch the electrical currents that are in our body and I think for a lot of us, we've got to make sure we got that electrical current of the Holy Spirit flowing through us all the time where we're receiving Acts 1.8. You shall receive power to be a witness. Hello? So I'm receiving to be, receiving to be, receiving to be. And then all of a sudden, when we, when we get through and we realize God's giving us a soft heart. We can be like the Apostle Paul who uses words like praise, abound, be comforted, be confident, comfort others, hope, give thanks, be favored, stand firm, and have joy. So today, point number two is simply this. Don't let anything get at your river. Don't let nothing get at your river. Come on, turn to your neighbor and just say, I'm not going to let nothing get into my river. Come on, like preach it with me today. 
John 7, 37 to 39, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Do you see the invitation there? If anyone. Are you thirsty today? If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, out of the heart will flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit whom those believed in him were to receive. Like, this is so powerful to me. You don't let anything touch your joy. Don't let anything, let anything touch your peace. Romans, said for the, Romans says, for the, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. When I was a little guy, we grew up, uh, we grew up going to church, and we went to this uh, thing back in the day. It was called Sunday school. Kids, Sunday school. We go to Sunday school. And we, we learned this little song. And as I was you know, praying about this message, I, I, I remembered it came out of me. It, it went something like this. It went, I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Come on, you know it. Some of you know it. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Come on, snap your fingers. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. And then we get really low and we jump up. Spring up a well. Splash, 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 splash. <laughs> Within my soul. <laughs> Now you know why I don't lead worship, but that wasn't too bad. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm always joking around with Home Church Calgary that I'm going to release a, a worship album. And I can't, like I literally, I can't sing, but I always joke around about it, and I've done it so many times that people are actually expecting me to do a worship album now. So just between me and you, it's never going to happen, but just let them keep believing it, okay? <laughs> I got a river of life. Garbage in. My mama always used to say, Bryce, garbage in, garbage out. She always say that to me, Bryce, garbage in, garbage out. And how true is that? Because if I fill my heart with garbage, if I'm fueling, listen, I do not put bad gas in my Harley Davidson. I put premium in that thing. I want it to run real, come on, there's going to be Harleys in heaven. Come on, somebody. <laughs> uh, on the eighth day, God created Harley Davidsons. <laughs> garbage in, garbage out. Put good fuel, the Holy Spirit in. And I, so I love this, God in, God out. God in, God out, Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will remove, ooh, I will remove that heart of flesh. <laughs> so God wants to give us a new heart. How does he do that? Well, if we talk to the doctors about our hearts, our physical hearts, I think it applies for our healthy hearts. Eat healthy, number one. <laughs> if Dr. Bryce, if I was actually a doctor, these are the points. Eat healthy, eat healthy. First word, last word. What's the first word of your day? What's the last word of your day? You know, eat healthy, yes, physically, but spiritually, I wanna encourage you, your first word, the first five minutes of your day matters. There's so many of us that are grabbing for the news, grabbing for the social media, we're grabbing for, grab for your Bible, grab for you version. First word, last word, first word, last word. Everybody say it, first word, last word. Eat healthy. Get active, number two, get active to keep a healthy physical and spiritual heart. You gotta keep active, keep your Matthew 28 on. Go into, when we leave this place today, just think, I'm going into my mission field. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Doctors will say, stay at a healthy weight. Stay at a healthy weight, watch what you're watching, watch what you're putting in, watch what you are consuming, watch how much you are consuming. The pastoral, even, even this moment of preaching in 30 minutes today, I cannot compete with the hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of social media and news content that we're receiving. I pray that we would be informed by news, we'd be informed, but this would be what would transform us. Hello? So watch what you're watching, watch what you're eating, watch, watch that weight. This is one, quit smoking and stay away from secondhand smoke. Listen, we gotta be so careful about smoke damage that we're causing because we've taken in all this information and now we're leading our families this way, we're leading our, our businesses this way and we could be going the wrong way because our hearts are hard and we could be causing smoke damage. We've gotta watch that. Man, I want somebody to be able to receive today. God wants to bless me, my family, and the church. But we gotta get through some of 
the smoke can control your blood pressure. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Oh, and then watch this one, manage stress. Watch out for that anxiety, everybody. Oh, it's trying to get all of our hearts all the time. Our hearts are constantly under attack. Remember that, guard your heart. It's the wellspring of life. Do something to enjoy life. Man, if it's a walk, if, if finances are tight and what you can do is go down the road to 7-Eleven and grab a Slurpee and, and hold hands with your wife, you do that and you do something to enjoy life. You do something to enjoy life with your family. You come to church, you say, God, I can't wait to enjoy your presence. And so I love this as we wrap up today, the words of Jesus. And I really hope, I hope this, this verse lands in the right spot in our hearts today. For some, it's a bit of a coffee cup verse. We've heard it uh, a few times. And for some, it might be your first time hearing it today. If you're watching, it may be your first time hearing it. But these are the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I hope you'll hear what he says about our hearts. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't let your hearts be. City life, you don't let your heart be troubled. <laughs> you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house. There are many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That where you also may be is where I am. Oh, I hope that that will just rest on you right here at City Life. I hope it'll rest on you as you're watching online. You don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't let trouble create a hard heart in you today. Allow the Holy Spirit to soften your heart. Maybe you're coming to Jesus today for the first time. Maybe there's somebody here today. You're coming to Jesus for the first time. He wants to replace that old stony heart. <laughs> for some of us here today, maybe when we've been Christians for a long time and we need to say, God, take the rocks out. Take that calcification out of my heart that I can receive your word afresh today. You wanna give me a new heart today that I could receive your word daily, that I'd watch the condition of my heart and that I'd be able to receive strength today, that comfort that the apostle Paul was talking about, that comfort that only comes from you, that strength that only comes from you, and not to keep it to myself, but to go out into our community and into our city and into our world to see God do amazing things. Heart for the church, heart for the church. I believe God's plan is his church. There's no plan B, this is, this is plan A, everybody. And so we've got to watch the condition of our hearts personally and our heart for God's house. So, Lord, I'm praying for every single circumstance here right at City Life, everyone that's watching online. Lord, you know the trouble that each one of us is facing. Lord, you know the different boats that everyone is. Lord, we're in, we're in a storm. We're in a storm socially. We're in a, so, a storm politically. It, there's just storms out in the world. So many people, Lord, struggling right now. But I pray that the trouble would not create hard heart in us, but it would soften our hearts to be able to say, God, you actually can do a miracle in and through this situation. And so, Lord, I'm praying that you would heal lives today. Lord, you would heal marriages today. Lord, you would heal families today from one soft heart to two soft hearts, to a family, to a church of a soft heart, to saying, God, that you would do a miracle in and through my life. And so today we just give you the praise. We give you the glory for your word today that says, don't be troubled. Believe in me. <laughs> so with every head bowed, every eye closed here in the room, everyone online, today is your day to have that Ezekiel moment where Jesus wants to give you that brand new heart. <laughs> it's a decision to say, Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord, and be my Savior. And I would be so honored to pray this prayer with you today, inviting Jesus to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. Right here in the room, if there's anybody here 
that would like to receive Jesus, every head bowed, every eye closed, from the front to the back, side to side, if you're here today and you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord and the Savior of your life, saying, Jesus, come into my heart. Give me that new heart. Soften my heart today. Would you just respond and be really bold, really bold today, and put up your hand so I can see it on the count of three. One, two, three. Is there anyone here that would say, yes, today is my day to receive Jesus, yes, to make him the Lord and Savior of my life. I'm declaring over all of these hands today, never the same in Jesus' name. Uh, City Life, could we get our hands up with everybody that's praying this prayer? If you're, if you're praying with us online, would you put your, even just put your hand up? And could we say, Jesus, come into my heart. Give me a new heart. Today I'm making you my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sin. And I repent of that sin. Today cleanse me, wash me, Make me brand new. Today I decide to follow you. Oh, I'm never going to be the same. Never, ever, ever going to be the same. In Jesus' name. And everybody thundered a great big massive amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Come on, let's just give God a praise today. We hope today's message encouraged you. If you want to take your next step in saying yes to Jesus, you can always contact us at cty.lc slash next step or fill out the next step section on the City Life app. It's an honor to play a small part in what God is doing in your life. We look forward to connecting with you soon.